In this uh, session, I am primarily uh, going to focus on the time inhomogeneous Markov jump process. In the earlier uh, session, we have uh, focused uh, to a large extent on time homogeneous Markov jump process. Right, uh, just to quickly uh, recap, whenever we are talking of a Markov jump process, first of all, we are talking of this particular process having a, a discrete state space, only a 4 or 5 or finite number of uh, states existing and this operating in a continuous uh, time and the process follows Markovian property. Right, when I am saying the process is following a Markovian uh, property, as we all know, the, the future value of uh, the process is completely dependent only on the current value and not all the values of the past. So that is where uh, we are bringing in uh, the Markovian uh, jump process. And uh, whenever we are looking at uh, computing the probabilities, Pij, the probability Pij in any Markovian process, we say that uh, the probability let's say I am bringing in even a time period into picture, if I am saying Pij of uh, S comma T, which is nothing but uh, the probability uh, of uh, the process, the probability of the process X being in uh, state J, the process value being j at time t, given that the process is in state i at time s. This is what we talk of as pij s comma t. Now, in the time homogeneous case, when we have discussed the time homogeneous case, I am not really that much bothered about the S and T separately, right? I mean, uh, there we were primarily uh, looking at uh, uh, the relation that uh, whatever is S and T, we are not specifical about the exact values of S and T. This would have got written to us as good as T minus S. Means, the probability of the transition is only dependent on uh, is only dependent on the is uh, on the time interval. This particular uh, transition, so probably it is as good as saying the P i j one comma four is same as P i j two comma five or it's even same as pij 10 comma 13 in case of a time homogeneous kind of a process what does this uh, statement mean the probability of transition the transition probability pij of, uh, from time s to time t depends only on the time interval it does not depend on the actual time period. How do I look at it? Let's say uh, when we have uh, used the scenarios of uh, uh, a driver discount, right? If, if an accident has been uh, made in the next one year, then the discount is decreased. If there are two accidents that are made in the next one year, the discount is even further decreased. So, if I want to find out the probability of the discount uh, at the end of the next three years, then it really doesn't uh, matter 
whether this person had driven uh, whether this person had a 15 years of driving history or a 5 years of a driving history because uh, i am more looking at from the current period onwards i am looking at uh, the accidents the probabilities of the accidents being made in the next uh, year the next uh, to next year so what is typically uh, coming out is whether uh, even if the person is of a 5 year driver or a 0 year experience driver or a 15 year experience driver it hardly matters but when i am talking about uh, a time in homogeneous process all that matters is these are all not equal the probability of moving from state i to state j from first to fourth year is different from second to fifth year different from 10th to 13th year which mean the absolute values of this s and t are really important in the time homogeneous process time in homogeneous process whereas the absolute values of s and t are really not important it's only that difference t minus s that is really important when i bring in the time homogeneous markov process markov jump processes so this is what is the relationship that uh, holds true whenever i talk about pij s comma t if at all i find this kind of a relationship holding true then i look at it as the markov uh, jump process uh, in a time homogeneous uh, manner otherwise i am looking at it as a time in homogeneous markov process itself so whichever uh, process uh, where i see that the transition rates the transition probabilities and the transition rate matrix that i get if it is constant over time the transition rates are constant over time they don't change with time then we are calling it as a markov uh, sorry time homogeneous markov jump process otherwise it is going more and more as time in homogeneous kind of a process itself so uh, to a large extent uh, we have seen a few examples which are more targeted towards the time homogeneous markovian uh, process so the only thing or only major differentiation we will uh, bring out when we discuss uh, about the time in homogeneous processes is there we were we were doing most of the examples and numericals with the focus of the time interval in mind but here we are focusing both on the absolute values also of the time that's the only major difference we will be dealing with the same chapman kolmogorov equations we would be uh, dealing with uh, the same uh, uh, forward uh, differential equation the backward uh, differential equation all of them will remain more or less one and the same with the only difference being i am more bothered about uh, the time intervals right now uh the the actual time uh, not just the interval but even the timing of the starting of the process and the ending of the process as well so just to see uh, uh, the change here when i look at the chapman kolmogorov equations when i am looking at the chapman kolmogorov uh, equation wherein uh, we have uh, simply uh, looked at in case of in case of uh, the time uh, homogeneous uh, kind of a process if we are able to recollect the chapman kolmogorov equations for any particular time period let's say if i am looking at it uh, as uh, s plus t as a time period all we have uh, said is look at it as the transition from state i to state k during the time period s and uh, from state k to state j during the time period t 
So you add up all these. This is so as good as saying, if at all I am looking at here, I am not looking at uh, from state S to state T or something like that. These are like the intervals. So if at all I have to uh, simplify the same, the same P I J S comma T, I could have written it as P I J T minus S. So probably uh, this is uh, as good as uh, saying, probably I could have gone with uh, P I K, some intermediate uh, time between uh, T minus S. So probably uh, say T minus S minus uh, W and uh, multiply it uh, with, so uh, whatever uh, is the time duration. So overall duration is uh, T minus S. So uh, uh, for T minus S minus uh, W, let's say uh, uh, I'm uh, looking at uh, the moment uh, from state I to state K and state K to state J by the time it reaches some T minus S. So that is the kind of uh, uh, relationship that we are uh, bringing out in case of time homogeneous form. But in case of time uh, inhomogeneous, all I am looking at is bring out all the time periods. So look at it as PI to PK moving from state S to state U where U's are completely different and from uh, P, uh, probability of transitioning from K to state J in time between the time U and T. So which means for different kinds of U's I am getting different kinds of uh, transition uh, probabilities. So here I am not bothered just, uh, I am not looking only at uh, the difference between the states. I am also looking at a clear jump from state S yes to state U and then from state U to state uh, T kind of stuff. So that is where we are differentiating uh, time homogeneous uh, Markov uh, jump process from a time in homogeneous. So here I am looking at all the times uh, very clearly 0 less than or equal to S less than or equal to U less than or equal to T. That is how the inhomogeneous kind of relations are going to uh, come out. The major uh, differentiation for us comes uh, only in terms of uh, the actual uh, time intervals, the actual uh, time periods also are considered not just the difference in the time periods. So applying the same for the transition rates, right now that uh, we have the chapman Kolmogorov equation, the transition rate computation also is nothing but it's a, a derivative. Transition rate is nothing but it's a differentiation of the probability. So Pij in S to T this is what I am trying to differentiate and uh, this is what will give me the transition rate uh, at time S. When I am differentiating this uh, with respect to T and then substituting uh, T equal to S, it will give me uh, the value of the transition rate at time period S. So, all we are trying to uh, put in this case uh, is the the uh, the simple way of uh, putting the same stuff p i j moving from s moving moving from state i to state j in a time in a small time interval uh, s to s plus h is as good as saying taking it as h and uh, multiplying it with new i j because this is the transition rate for very small intervals of transition from s to s plus h I could very well write it as H multiplied by mu i j of S plus from small correction factor where i is not equal to j but whenever i becomes equal to j I could directly uh, go with it as 1 plus H times mu i j plus the correction factor wherever i is going to 
so it, it's uh, it's uh, simply uh, like uh, putting up uh, this kind of a uh, relationship for uh, computing uh, the transition rates in case of time in homogeneous markovian markov jump process now whenever we are uh, looking at uh, the simple uh, form especially uh, when we are uh, looking at uh, the simple uh, derivation uh, form of it uh, especially when i want to uh, look at uh, new i i mean transition from state i to state i itself so probably it's very easy to derive these kind of things if we are going with uh, the limiting kind of a scenario because the typical uh, way i can define mu i i mu i j which we have uh, looked at earlier also this is the instantaneous rate so i could very well define mu ij at any point as limit h tends to 0 the probability pij s to s plus h minus pij s to s divided by h that was what uh, was the mechanism which we were uh, using so the same logic if i am applying for mu i i right now limit h tends to 0 p i i in time period s to s plus h minus p i i in time period s to s divided by h now here this is where i can bring out limit h tends to 0 transition from i to i in time s to s plus h so it is as good as saying i subtract from one all other transitions where where uh, it is not equal to i i'll take all those transitions so all transitions outside i so i am taking it as the uh, sum of all those transitions from i to j within that time period s to s plus h is what i am taking and pii in time s to s this is always uh, something in state s sorry at time s staying in uh, uh, st staying in uh, state i and even the probability of staying in state i only at time s this is a perfect uh, Uh, perfectly certain kind of a scenario so this is working out to a probability of uh, 1 and divided by h now when i am simplifying it this is directly uh, coming out uh, that limit h tends to 0 minus sigma pij of s to s plus h that is one of the prime reasons uh, whenever i am using this is simply uh, going out as minus uh, sigma j not equal to i mu i j of s so you add up uh, all the transition intensities especially when i want the transition uh, rate for transition from state i to state i in case of uh, time uh, whether it is in homogeneous or homogeneous kind of a markovian process uh, if at all the jump uh, as far as the jump process is concerned if i want the transition rate uh, uh, from the same state to the same state uh, in a particular time interval then it's as good as uh, the summation of the transition rates uh, uh to all other states from that particular state that is one important uh, relationship that we can easily uh, derive and uh, try to come out with uh, a generator matrix for the same then the next important aspect that we are uh, looking at uh, here in case uh, just like uh, we have uh, forward differential equations and backward differential equations in a time homogeneous kind of a process we have the same in case of time of in homogeneous also so here also we are taking do by do t e i j s comma t so here uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, time homogeneous uh, kind of a process 
we have the forward uh, differential uh, equation with respect to only uh, the time interval difference. Whenever we are looking at uh, the, 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 the differential equations, dou by dou t or there I have taken it as d by dt directly because there I have considered pij and the timing difference. So this t there is the time interval between the two states, timing difference between, uh, between the two time periods. So this I have uh, taken it at that point as uh, the same pik at time period uh, during this time period t and an instantaneous uh, instantaneous uh, forward rate k to j or probably uh, the other way we have uh, written is dou by dou t the p of t is coming out as p of t multiplied by the generator matrix A. Here also, but here the S and T's are different. This is the starting time and this is the ending time. So that's the reason I'm, I cannot directly uh, take as dou by dou t. Here I could have uh, taken it as d by dt, not an issue because it's only one variable existing. Whereas here I am looking at S and T also as variable, the starting time and the ending time. So that's the reason we are working out as the partial differential equation dou by dou t. This also comes out that I go ahead with uh, the probability of transition from state i to state k with from time s to t and at time t at time t uh, an instantaneous force of uh, transition transition rate at time t from state k to state j. So in a in a in this similar kind of a form, if I have to write, it is coming out as dou by dou t, the p of s comma t. Here the t is just a differential between the two time periods. Here they are the actual states. That's the only difference that comes out. So the probability from s to t, and uh, the generator matrix also changes at every point in time. It is not the transition rates are not constant for all time periods. Those are some of the small differences that come out as a part of uh, the uh, time inhomogeneous kind of a process. The major difference is I have to look out for a separate generator matrix uh, at every point in time, a separate transition probability matrix at every point in time. So the major changes come uh, looking at uh, the different time periods, not just the interval between the time periods. That is where we differentiate a time homogeneous process from a time inhomogeneous. Otherwise, the process that is followed is more or less the same. If you are uh, if you are more and more uh, uh, con confident uh, with the time homogeneous kind of a process the understanding would be more or less similar for the time inhomogeneous except for an additional usage of the starting time and ending time are more or less required. So just looking at uh, this as an example, the typical, uh, if we are having, for example, three states, right? Let me take one example, having three states, A, B and C. Let's say these are the three states. I can move from state A to state B or even from state B to state uh, uh, A or there could be a move from state A to state C or there could be a move from state A to state C. Let's say this is uh, the typical uh, transition diagram. Right? Uh, probably uh, saying at this particular uh, point in time I am looking at uh, the transition rates, let's say, being uh, A of T, B of T, C of T, because here it's just not C, it's not constant across. If uh, I say that A, B, C, D here, then probably uh, it is uh, forming a time homogeneous kind of a process. But uh, if we are uh, looking at uh, this kind of mechanism, then it is becoming a time inhomogeneous kind of a process. Now, 
all I am looking at uh, is based on this if I have to uh, compute the the probability of transitioning from state A to state B in from time S to time T. Let's say this is what I am interested uh, in finding out. So, uh, so initially I can go ahead with uh, the differential equation. I'll start with the differential equation saying do by do T the probability of transition from state A to state B in time S to uh, S to now for that what is that we are uh, doing I'll put the generator matrix first of all what is the generator matrix here A B C from A to from A to B there is A of T is the transition rate and uh, from A to C it is C of T and so this particular uh, mu mu i i will come out as minus of a of t plus c of t that is what we have uh, discussed earlier similarly in case of b from b to a the transition rate is b of t b to c it is d of t so here it comes out as minus of b of t plus d of t i hope we are com comfortable until here now from c there is nothing that is going back so c to a is zero c to b is zero so the minus of the summation again is becoming zero so this is what will become your typical generator matrix now all we are uh, saying is now all i am uh, looking at uh, is p h h uh, sorry, P A. So from now, when I am uh, putting up the probability part, I am looking at it as P A A probability of transitioning from A to A, probability of transitioning from A to B, probability of transitioning from A to C. Similarly, B to A, B to B. and B to C then similarly probability from C to A C to B and C to C so this is the other matrix that I have this is the probability matrix and this is my transition matrix now when I am uh, looking at uh, the forward differential equation do by do t of p a b s of t is just like p a b so i want the second one so the first row of this i multiply with the second column of this so which gives me p a a s comma t multiplied by a of t minus p a b s of t multiplied by b of t plus d of t this is what will become the forward differential equation moving from state a to state b so uh, state a to state b means the first row second column so to get the first row second column i multiply the first row of the first matrix with the second column of the second matrix that is what will give me p a a uh, s t multiplied by a of t minus p a b s t multiplied by b of t plus d of t now you could very well uh, make out in case i am interested in do by do t p a c of s t this works out to what p a s t means this one so first row multiplied with the third column so i'll get it as p a a s t 
multiplied by C of T plus P A B S T multiplied by D of T. That's it. So the same way, if at all I want P A A itself, if at all I want uh, P A A itself, the same logic I could uh, go do by do T P A A S T. Uh, when do I want P A A? The uh, here, if I just want P A A, then it is the first row, first column. So the first row of this, I multiply with the first column. What is it coming out? P A A S T multiplied by minus of A of T plus C of T plus P A B S T multiplied by B of T. But here, if I want what is called as do by do T P a A with a line over it means it is exclusively in A only. It did not move to B and then come back to A. What is the probability of exclusively in A itself? If that is the case, then I'll consider I'll not consider a transition to B at all. So this portion will not exist when I have a question of P A A with a, a cap on it. So, which will simply come out as P A A S of T multiplied by A of T plus uh, C of T. So, once we know the forward differential uh, equations or for that matter even the backward differential equation, we should be able to derive the relationships uh, for the P A A's and P A B's and the other stuff quite comfortably because this is how the relay one based on uh, the transition uh, intensities that we have, the transition rates that we have, we can very well derive the the probabilities from one state to the other state using these forward and backward differential equations. So the forward always goes with that kind of a logic, wherein first we take the this particular matrix as the first matrix, this is the second matrix and that's how we derive. But when I'm going with uh, the backward differential equations, a little bit of more understanding now. When I'm going with the backward differential equations, I'm always taking the derivative with respect to S, not with respect to T. So Pij of s comma t this is first working out as minus of the summation across all the states wherein i am looking at mu i k at time period s and then i am looking at mu, uh, the probability of transitioning from state k to state j from time s to time t so the other way I could have written the same dou by dou s p i j s t. The only difference in backward differential, the derivative is happening with respect to s. And here also we see I first take the generator matrix a of s and then I multiply it with the probability matrix p i j or probably uh, whatever uh, uh, the, I take the probability uh, matrix p of s and t. So, as simple as the same example which I have uh, used earlier, right, when I am uh, talking of three different uh, states, A, B and C, where the process can go from state A to state B, probably uh, with uh, the transition uh, rates A of T and B of T, it can go from state A to state C with C of T, state B to state C with D of T and no others. If that's the case, the generator matrix as I have explained uh, earlier, uh, A to B is going as A of T and A to C is going as C of T. So this is becoming minus A of T plus C of T. Similarly, uh, a, B to A is going as B of T. 
this is b to c is going as d of t so this becomes minus b of t plus d of t these all are becoming zero so this is what is happening to the generator matrix and probably when i am taking uh, the probabilities uh, we are talking of p a a so let me say that uh, everywhere there is s of t uh, s comma t so p a a p a b p a c in all of them there is s comma t from probability of transitioning from state a to state b in time s to t Fra uh, 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 so probability of transitioning probability that uh, the process is in state b at time t given that it is in state a at time s so that is what we are trying to write out uh, here so pba pbb pbc then i have pca pcb pcc now when i am talking about a backward differential equation i'll first take this as I'll first take uh, I'll first take uh, this as the first matrix and this as the second one. So if at all my requirement goes as do by do s p a a s comma t. So p a a is the first one. So I'll take first row of this, multiply it with the first column of this. Or probably first let's start with p a b. first row of this multiply it with the second column of this so in case of uh, <coughs> pab here i get uh, pab in case of pab i am getting it as minus a of t plus c of t i multiply it with pab then plus a of t i multiply it with pbb then c of t i multiply it with pcb now because pcb is zero the probability of transitioning from state c to state b because that root does not exist i don't need to consider this at all so it gets simplified to do by do s pab from time s to c s to t comes out as minus of a of t plus c of t multiplied by p a b from time s to t plus a of t multiplied by p b b from time s to t so these are the ways we can very well operate out similarly if i want a paa do by do s paa transitioning only at a with a with a dash on the top of uh, aa then what is that i could see the first row multiplied with the first column only there is no other transition coming up so that's the reason this works out as minus of a of t plus c of t and i multiply it with paa paa of s comma t so that is what uh, will get uh, uh, will get uh, executed and of course because there is a minus outside the minus and minus will get uh, cancelled out so probably here yeah instead of t we'll use s because across the period we are working backwards so wherever uh, the transition rates are there wherever i have used a of t we are going to use a of s b of s c of s d of s kind of stuff because at time s we are talking about the transition uh, rates here so that's how uh, we model that's how uh, we model uh, using the time in homogeneous uh, kind of uh, practices for uh, finding out uh, the probabilities at any particular point in time once the transition rates are uh, available with us we are looking at uh, computing uh, the, the the forward using the forward differential equations the probabilities associated with that so uh, uh, when we are uh, looking at the probability of staying in a particular state the next uh, important thing i am looking at is the probability of staying in a particular uh, state 
is as uh, simple as I could have uh, simplified it there where we have uh, got the response that do by do t whether it is forward or backward whatever it is we have got staying in one single state from do by do t of the probability state staying in state A only permanently for the, that much period between S and T. It did not move anywhere. It was in state S only. It was in state A only. That we have uh, got it uh, as minus P of A, A. Earlier when we have done using the forward differential equation, we have got it as minus P of A, A in time S, T. I am multiplying it with uh, a of t plus c of t kind of a model right uh, that is where now all, all we are uh, saying is it could have uh, got out uh, probably i could have taken uh, this down so do by do t of p a a s t divided by p a a s t is working out to probably minus of a of t plus c of t kind of stuff so this is uh, working out as do by do t this actually comes out as log p of a a s t this is working out to uh, something like this And this is also working out like dou by dou t of log. So if I am taking an uh, integral, it is becoming log p a a of s t. I can take it as uh, minus integral of a of t plus c of t, where I am integrating it between s and t. Similarly, it is working out like P A A of S T is becoming e to the power minus integral of S to T, A of T plus C of T kind of stuff. So that is where all we are are probably A of uh, K plus C of K D K. So all it is uh, working out for me is if at all I want to find out the probability at any particular point. I am looking at their transition uh, rates, adding up all the transition uh, rates, right? Adding up uh, all the transition uh, rates, and uh, then simply uh, computing the probability of staying in that particular state. So this is uh, like uh, mu. This is this is nothing but this is moving uh, moving from state A to state B. This is the transition from state A to state C, which means if I had subtract, if I had added uh, both of them, which is as simple as uh, if I had taken uh, the negative of whatever uh, the state, uh, 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 because the summation of the transitions of these two is same as uh, the this transition from uh, A to A. So that is where we could very well arrive at uh, P A A S T also using uh, uh, using this kind of uh, integration kind of a uh, relationship. We can very well uh, arrive at uh, the probability of uh, staying in a particular uh, state uh, i for the entire time period. So the other way I could look at it is especially when a process. Now staying part is over. Now let's say a process starts leaving a particular state A. It goes into state B, or it goes into state C. Now, if I am more interested in finding out the probability, in K, in if I am interested in finding out uh, the probability that it will uh, go into a uh, state uh, B. Once it leaves A, once it leaves A, the probability that it goes into state B is nothing but if at all I am saying that this is A of T and this is B of T, the transition. I am only looking at the transition to state uh, B 
and I am uh, summing it up with uh, all the transitions. So this is what is the probability that it typically uh, goes to state B once it leaves the state A kind of stuff. So that is one more uh, important relationship that we can uh, use for solving a lot of numericals. Similarly, just like uh, a differential equation, in some cases we can very well use the integral equations also to find out uh, Pij as to t, we could very well use uh, the integral equation also which comes out as, take it like this, okay, it starts at time 0 and uh, uh, within the time t minus s because we are talking of moving from state s to state, uh, sorry, time s to time t, moving from state i to state j. So what we are saying is, okay, integrate it over this entire time interval 0 to t minus s. First look at it as the probability of moving from state i to state k in some from s to t minus uh, w time period and from there let it uh, transition from state k to state j so find out the instantaneous uh, transition rate from state k to state j at the time period t minus w and uh, from there i want to find out the probability that uh, it is in state j forever without coming back from time period t minus w to t. So this is what I could very well use as an integral form of an equation wherever I am seeing p i j but if at all I am looking at p i i at the same time period I am uh, looking at it uh, in a slightly different way. Here uh, I am also, here I am adding up all the stuff where k is not equal to j. What does this mean where k is not equal to j? I am transitioning to a different state at any point in time. The transition is happening to a different state from k to j there is a transition that is happening and we are taking care of the transition intensity, transition rate at that particular point in time. So here also we are uh, talking about, if at all I am talking of uh, PII, that is where we are taking care of in case of PII. Here also I am looking at K not equal to I. So here I am looking at P i k s to t minus w. Here comes mu k i at t minus w k should not be equal to i. That's one of the prime reason we are having a slightly different problem P i i at t minus w comma t t w plus at the same time I will take uh, the probability that it is uh, in state I only between time s to t, right? So if I want a regular PII, we are saying one way is it could be lying in state I only forever and the other thing is it might have transitioned to the other states and again come back to I. So that's the reason we are taking uh, these two, two different uh, parts to compute uh, PII. But when I am using P uh, I J, uh, it's only transition from one state to the other state at any point in time. So I don't need to consider this additional term when I am using uh, the P I J computation. So the same logic can hold true even with uh, this kind of a model. So the simple thing that says is the process is starting, let's say, in state A. And I, I have to see that it has to uh, end in state B. So what we are uh, saying is, let it move from state I A to state B from time S to T minus W. Then we are looking at force of transition from uh, state uh, B 
to state state p to uh, state state b uh, state b to uh, state uh, sorry here i am uh, looking at if at all i am interested in uh, seeing the transition from state a to state b i will see that uh, the process uh, what is the probability that it is uh, uh, moving from state a to state a so probably if i am interested in p a b s of t s comma t i look at uh, the only thing that i have to make sure is this k and j are not the same so i will take it as integral 0 to t minus s p a a because it can move from a to a means it's like staying in state a so from time s to t minus w then from state a it has moved to state b in time t minus w then it has uh, stayed in that particular state b from t minus w to t and i cannot have any other probably uh, otherwise i could have taken moving from state a to state c this is possible but from state c coming to state b this is not possible at t, t minus w because there is no way that it can move back to b from b from c so this step is ignored there so if at all i want pab from the earlier model which i have discussed the only thing that i am going to get is pab is coming out in this uh, integral form saying uh, p a a s p minus w mu a b and p b b t minus w to t so that is what uh, is coming out uh, for the forward uh, differential uh, equation similarly i could very well uh, think of moving from p a to p c if it is uh, a c if my intention was p a c then i could have got something different I could have got it as integral t minus uh, s. I could have first continued p a a s to t minus w. Then from uh, at t minus w, I could have moved from state a to state c using the transition rate. And then I could have uh, stayed in state c forever from t minus w to t. So that is one possibility. The other possibility I could have uh, looked at is the same integration here itself I could have moved from state A to state B from S to T minus W then from B there could be a transition to state C and then staying in state C from T minus W to T. So what could have very much uh, happened is these two possibilities would create my uh, uh, probability of transition from state i to state state a to state c from time s to time t so that is how uh, the forward differential uh, equations are simply uh, forward integral equations are working for the computation of the probability of transition from state i to state j in time between time s to the same logic I can uh, go ahead with uh, the backward integral equations as well just like the way I have uh, gone ahead with the forward integral uh, equation I am going with uh, backward integral uh, equations for uh, the same Kolmogorov for this for computing the same Pij or uh, Pii here also what is that we are uh, going with and integrating still from 0 to t minus s but I am operating it uh, the backward way where I am saying okay the probability of staying in state i for time s to s plus w so we are not looking at from t perspective we are looking at it from s perspective okay stay in state i only until uh, uh, until a time period w from s to s plus w then let there be a transition from i to k and then 
stay in uh, and then uh, the probability of moving from state k to state j from that s plus w to t. Here all I want is the k is not equal to i. The same, the transition uh, whatever is coming out, I am looking at it uh, as a two different state. So this kind of an equation will work out uh, for my backward integral. So both of them, the intention is still the same, but what we are trying to use is in all these cases, depending on the comfort level that is coming out, depending uh, for some kind of uh, situations, uh, probably a differential equations are more and more appropriate. For some kind of situation, forward integral equations are more appropriate. For uh, some situations, the backward integral equations are more appropriate. So, we have to use it uh, more appropriate to the situation to do the necessary uh, computations. And uh, the generally, uh, we see uh, while computing uh, the residual uh, holding times. So probably you uh, have to find out the expected time in a particular uh, state. Uh, we'll see these things as a part of a couple of numericals which we can uh, take up where we can typically uh, use these kind of uh, applications of forward uh, and uh, backward uh, integral uh, equations. And one of the major uh, applications uh, that come out when we take up the numericals, we'll discuss that in more detail. There is a kind of a duration dependency uh, kind of examples that can come out. So we'll take up a numerical and try to uh, understand uh, those kind of that kind of uh, topic quite comfortably rather than using the integral form of uh, equations because. A numerical can uh, simplify our understanding uh, of uh, computing the probabilities uh, and all quite comfortably rather than uh, the integrals kind of uh, equations like this. So uh, what we can do is once we have the basic uh, understanding of uh, the time in homogeneous kind of a process, we'll take up a couple of uh, numericals which can address the understanding of this in even more detail. Right? So that is what I would like to uh, clearly uh, differentiate between uh, time homogeneous and time inhomogeneous uh, Markov uh, jump processes. Right, uh, we'll uh, deal with a couple of uh, interesting uh, numericals which can simplify our understanding of all these things to a large extent. If you have any further queries regarding the same, you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the numbers that I have given below or send in an email at momsizer at Thanks a lot uh, for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.